Welcome to GameSpot Live. I'm Greg Kasavin here to tell you about Ikaruga for the GameCube. This is a game that dates back to an era when the word shooter was used to refer to games like Gradius and Galaxian and Space Invaders uh, rather than games like Doom and Halo and Medal of Honor. Uh, it's, it's a pretty standard looking vertical scrolling shooter. It's, it's, in, it's a game in which you're a little spaceship and you're uh, gunning down uh, tons and tons of enemies. It's you against the whole world, basically, in, in uh, only five uh, increasingly difficult levels. So this seems like a really simplistic kind of homage to a, a bygone era, uh, and yet Ikaruga is just a truly remarkable game and a truly great game in its own right, regardless of whether uh, you, you play games like this, uh, of whether you appreciate games like this. Uh, Ikaruga is uh, still a noteworthy achievement that, uh, you know, is, it's really fortunate that this game made it stateside since it started uh, just as a kind of a quiet uh, release in Japanese arcades. Even though Ikaruga was created by a small number of people and was released pretty quietly, actually it had a lot of people excited even before it came out. Uh, that's because it's developed by a company called Treasure, which is well known for, for its games of this nature. Uh, Treasure is a developer that uh, makes these kind of highly technical games and ones uh, with uh, really good production values and also that just uh, kind of uh, push the envelope for the genre even as they kind of fall squarely into it. So uh, in Ikaruga's case, what, what makes it different from all other uh, kind of space shooters of its type is that it, it defies the notion that's been kind of reinforced over the past 20 years that you as the player have to avoid everything on the screen. Uh, all previous shooters, they're, they're about the sense that you have to dodge everything and maybe only pick up uh, the occasional power-up or something like that. But if you see a bullet flying at you, get out of its way. Uh, Ikaruga turns this concept on its ear by introducing the idea of polarity. Uh, your ship at any point can change from white to black form, and every single enemy uh, that you encounter in the game is either white or black itself, and will shoot either white or black bullets. The way it works is you absorb any light-colored bullets. So if you're white, you absorb all white bullets, and if you're black, you absorb all black bullets. Pretty simple. But this system causes you to constantly think on your feet, because the thing is, when you shoot uh, at an opposite-colored opponent, you deal double damage. Uh, but when you shoot at a light-colored opponent, you're much safer. Uh, at the same time, if you destroy a light-colored opponent, uh, it'll, it'll shoot kind of these uh, suicide bullets at you as it blows up. So what'll sometimes happen is you'll destroy an opponent, uh, switch it to the opposite color, and then be destroyed by its kind of volley of fire uh, that, that it emits uh, just as it explodes. So really, uh, Ikaruga has a very distinctive uh, feel and strategy to it. There's really nothing like it, even though it looks uh, a lot like uh, other games of its type. Additionally, not only do like-colored bullets not harm you, they actually help you. Uh, they give you more points, which you use toward extra lives, and and also uh, you know towards bragging rights, since you can post your uh, score on the internet uh, using the game's kind of built-in uh, password system uh, web ranking. Also, whenever you absorb light-colored bullets, you charge up your your homing lasers, uh, which you can use to destroy a large number of enemies all at the same time or cause a lot of damage to a boss. So you're constantly trying to absorb one set of bullets while avoiding the other and switching back and forth. Um, it's a really unusual dynamic, and, and it uh, makes this game um, really fast-paced, but at the same time just extremely methodical. It, on top of that, this game is simply really hard. It consists of only five levels, but uh, you wouldn't want too many more levels than this because it would just be uh, impossible, nearly impossible, to memorize too much more uh, stuff like this. So the polarity gameplay adds this whole new level of depth to Ikaruga that, that most games like this just don't have. Uh, on top of that, there's a chain combo system in the game that's uh, really going to be the key uh, for, for your mastery of the game. It, it's what separates you know, the truly great Ikaruga players from all the rest. It's really simple. Uh, basically, you just have to destroy enemies in multiples of three. Three white ones, three black ones, in whatever order, as long as it's three at a time. Uh, every stage is set up so that you can uh, shoot your way through the entire stage without uh, skipping a beat, basically. But to do this, you need uh, the precision of, of a surgeon, if not, if not something even greater than that. Ikaruga doesn't look spectacular, but it looks really, really good and, and really clean. Uh, it's got a really uh, well-defined aesthetic to it, 
uh, again, in that all the enemies are either white or black. It's got this very uh, thematic, artistic style to it, and, and uh, you, the different uh, enemy ships and boss monsters you run into all have kind of a surreal and strange look to them. They, they don't even look like spaceships. They don't look like aliens. Um, the, the whole game just uh, looks quite quite unusual, and, and again, that's sort of a testament uh, to the fact that this game manages to distinguish itself from uh, dozens of other games of this nature. It's got a soundtrack that's kind of a throwback to uh, other old shooters. It's, it's very uh, heavy on the synthesized instruments, but it sounds great and fits the action very well. This is a real no-nonsense kind of game. There, there are no fancy intros, no long loading times. You just start playing and, and you're off. Uh, you could play one or two players. Uh, again, there, there are additional layers of depth when playing the game as two players, uh, mostly in that you know, there, there are some entirely new types of strategies that open up when you've got two ships on screen. Ikaruga is a pretty hardcore game. It's clearly designed for people who've been playing space shooters for a long time. Uh, it's, it's there just to really surprise and impress people who've been playing this genre, uh, just in, in how it defies the conventions of the genre. At the same time, it's a game that pretty much anyone uh, should be able to appreciate at some level, just in how uh, s simple and, and uh, precise and, and uh, fast-paced the whole game is. Uh, if anything, it, one could liken it to something like Tetris. Uh, it's a game that just hasn't been done before in any form. It's, it's uh, very unusual and unique. Um, it's also very hard, so it's, it's definitely not for everyone. Uh, you know, there's no real story to it. Uh, it. It's not a game that, you know, everyone should go out and buy. But if you're interested in just an extremely challenging, extremely fast-paced game that, uh, that you really have to master uh, in order to, uh, you know, truly appreciate, then uh, Ikaruga is, is just one of a kind. So uh, a lot of GameCube owners are going to be very pleased to add this one to their collections.